hands, I'm holding this coffee cup. So which bin does this coffee cup belong in? Trash, compost, or recycling? Anybody know? Okay, yes. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. This coffee cup belongs in the trash. And how many people knew that? Raise your hands. Okay, so significantly fewer. And honestly, I'm not surprised. This coffee cup, along with all of these items on the slide, at MIT belong in the trash. Now, notice how I specified MIT. That's because these recycling and composting rules vary by geographic location. So that means what's true for MIT might not necessarily be true for your community, but there are still some general guidelines that you can follow. For example, composite materials like this coffee cup usually go into the trash. It has a paper outside and a waxy lining on the inside, and these two components are very difficult to separate from each other. So like other composite materials, this coffee cup would go into the trash can. Another common mistake I see is black plastic. Black plastic has a black dye in it. And again, it's very hard to separate from the transparent plastic. And because people don't want to use recycled materials and suddenly have their product become black, they don't want to take black plastic in the recycling. And so it should go into the trash. I remember around two years ago, I was walking around campus, and I was looking into the recycling and compost bins, and I was very disappointed, because a lot of these items on the slides were in those recycling bins, which meant that those recycling bins were contaminated. And what's more concerning is that if those recycling bins reach a certain level of contamination, then everything in that bin would get thrown into the trash, even if there were things that could have been recycled. And so that made me question, along with other students across campus and people across the US, if our recycling actually gets recycled. And to answer this question, I, along with Natalie and Suki, have dedicated ourselves to an organization called Waste Watchers. And our mission is to start these conversations about waste. We train students on how to properly sort their waste on campus, and then we staff these students at different events by the bins so that they can help people figure out which bin that item belongs in. And so that way, we can, one, educate more people on how to properly sort their waste, and second, directly lower that contamination rate, which Suki will go into more now. So last spring, the MIT Office of Recycling and Materials Management conducted a recycling audit on MIT campus. On a given day in April, 662 bags of recycling were collected. Now I want everyone to think about how many of those bags went to recycling. Maybe it's all 662, 500, 300. Actually, only 84 bags went to recycling, which meant the rest of the bags, over 85% of the recycling that day, went directly to trash. Here's another fact. One of the major contaminants in those trashed recycling bags were the coffee cup that we misplaced before. MIT could be doing a lot better. Now, in the US, the statistics are relatively better. About 25% of municipal recycling is contaminated. So what are the implications of these numbers? For a long time already, the US sent most of its recyclables to other countries to be taken care of. There's nothing wrong with this. The other countries would take our recyclables and repurpose them into new materials and products exactly what recycling is. Then in 2018, China, one of our biggest importers of recyclable scrap, pushed out a waste ban, and they raised the contamination standard to 0.5%, which meant that any shipment of recyclables over to China cannot contain more than 0.5% trash. 
So from 25% to 0.5%. That is a large gap to jump. So what this meant was that those subpar recycling that we had in the US started building up in recycling facilities, clogging up the seaports, and eventually, most of it just ended up straight in landfill. That was when we realized that the US recycling institution is not where it needs to be. So why are we in this predicament today? It's because people have built up this habit of discarding items in the recycling because they think or hope that it's recyclable. And we'll call this hopeful recycling. Now, people are hopeful, and people want to do good. And what this means in the recycling world is that when we're standing in front of that daunting recycling bin, this hopefulness can often lead us to recycle a greasy pizza box, maybe a leftover container of food, or say that coffee cup again. Unfortunately, this desire to recycle, although well-meaning, is actually doing more harm than good. Because as Vivian said, once enough of these non-recyclable items end up in the recycling bin, the whole bin gets trashed. So even if people like you and me actually recycle correctly, if enough of these coffee cups or greasy pizza boxes end up in recycling, everything eventually ends up in landfill. And at a global level, years of this hopeful recycling have contributed directly to the growing pile of recyclables sitting in landfills all across the world. We've observed these behaviors, and we've listened at recycling receptacles for years. And what we've learned is that the simplest way to ensure your recyclables get recycled is to throw things out if you don't know whether or not they're recyclable. When in doubt, throw it out. Now, this is kind of disheartening. We all want to recycle. I know I want to recycle. But the truth is that the most common reason recyclables get thrown out is because of contamination. And with increasingly stringent contamination rates, as Suki mentioned earlier, the amount of recyclables sent to landfill increases each year. But there's hope. What we've shown through Waste Watchers is that by educating people on recycling, contamination levels decrease, and the amount of recyclables actually processed as recyclables increases. Our first example of this is from a chemical engineering seminar where without Waste Watchers, contamination rates were very high. As you can see, in the compost bin, 72% of the items were not compostable. When we staffed one Waste Watcher at the next event, contamination levels decreased significantly. Of 100 attendees, when we staffed one Waste Watcher, they were more enabled to interact with the waste receptacle up to 62%. The 0.5% contamination rate that we mentioned earlier is not met, met by this data. But there's reasons behind that. And from this, we learned, first, that having people at events to educate attendees makes a significant impact. And second, that we need more than one person at each event to truly make a difference. With this, we decided to staff the first dinner that the incoming class, MIT class of 2022, had on campus this fall. At this event, we taught these students how to recycle right, how to compost right, and what, unfortunately, they had to put in landfill. We were there at the first dinner in a week of orientation events. But by being there, throughout the rest of that week, the contamination levels were the lowest they've ever been during orientation. And this is a huge success for Waste Watchers. Our efforts, our time, truly made a difference in the way the waste system works at MIT. But this success story is not only ours. What this shows is that when people are educated and when they are aware of how to interact with the waste receptacle, they are able to repurpose materials more correctly. Suki, Vivian, and I spend over 20 hours each week on Waste Watchers. And time is hard to come by at MIT. But we do this because we are passionate about sustainability and we know that through education, our efforts really matter. 
And our efforts can be replicated anywhere, in your schools, in your workplaces, in public spaces. Educating people about waste systems will shape the future of sustainability. We all can learn about waste. We all have the ability to communicate with the people around us. And by combining these two things, we will live in a world free of hopeful recycling, free of when in doubt, throw it out, and full of the recycling that will preserve a future on this planet. Thank you.